Hi students, you have discussed many of the problems that can be solved using DFA in my earlier sessions of uh, classes or the videos. Today we just move on to understand another type of FA or finite automata that is called as NFA that is non-deterministic finite automata it is also called as nfa so the other videos or the previous videos was exclusively on design of uh, in a dfa now this video or this session of the video would give you brief information about what is nfa and how does it differ from dfa how do i solve an nfa and how do I convert that to DFA? So let's discuss one by one. So NFA, as the name says, it is a non-deterministic finite automata. So definition would go something like this. It says there exists zero, one or more transitions for any input symbol in any state unlike the definition of dfa where there we have specified clearly that there exists only one transition for every input symbol in each state that's not an issue here we have a flexibility of having zero or more transitions so you can have uh, either zero transitions or one transitions or more than one transition in any state so you can have as many states as you want and you can do it on the other end you also define nfa in a formal notation so let's see what is the formal definition of nfa an nfa a nfa is a five tuple system m equals q we already know some of the symbols it's almost similar to dfa q sigma delta q naught and f so these are the symbols available where q is q is finite set of internal states sigma is the finite set of external input symbols and delta is the transition function and q naught is an initial state f is finite set of final states you may feel the definitions is similar or same as what is written but there is a change what is the change do observe see here this part is same q is set of final states is fine sigma is set of inter external inputs is also fine the problem or the change or a difference is with delta so as i said delta is a transition function we know we have defined delta as q cross sigma recall with respect to dfa we had told q cross sigma is a, a q but here only changes it is two power q so q cross sigma is q cross sigma is a two power q mean to say with respect to nfa with respect to nfa it might be many states please do understand as i specified here in this uh, statement for any state with any input symbol it may be more than one state so you'll have maximum two power q states hope you're under hope you're able to understand this and remaining things would remain same q naught is initial state yes it will remain same q f is a set of financial states even that would remain as it is no need to worry about it 
Now, next let me see one simple example to write uh, NFO. Fine. So, let me write simple example to understand what is an NFA. One simple example we'll see. Say, write a NFA to accept strings of A's and B's starting with AB. So if you blindly check this, already we would have solved this problem using our uh, DFA. Hope you are aware of it. Now let me understand how do we work with respect to an NFA. Fine. So now for that purpose, we'll see how does it work. Say for example, now uh, as the name says, it is for uh, drawing NFA. Any host steps would remain same. We would list out all the strings accepted. It is AB, ABA, ABB, ABAB, and so on. Strings which are not accepted would be A, B, B, A, 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 and so on. Now, how do I solve? Very simple. Already we know that minimum string is AB, so obviously we need uh, so many states. So minimum state, uh, minimum string is AB. So we have uh, how many symbols? Two symbols. So we need three states. So in the state Q naught, if you accept uh, A in each Q1, in the state Q1, if you accept B, Leech Q2. Clear? Now, I make this as final state. So Q2 is final state. Don't worry about the color. It can be anything. Uh, I just added the color there. Now, as we know, we are not worried about uh, anything after the AB is encountered. So we make self loop of AB in the state Q2. And here also, I just make it. Somebody may say, no, so it would accept AAB. Somebody may say this cannot be there. Can we remove this? Yes, you can remove this. But I say this is the finalized NFA. This is the finalized NFA. You may ask so many. Somebody or many of them would uh, raise a question saying, how do you say this NFA? There are no transition for the state Q0 with the input symbol B. There is no transition from the state with the input symbol A and all. Yes, I agree. But this is the beauty of NFA. You have flexibility to write the transitions how many ever you want even so that is again a flexibility for us to write okay suppose if you say same thing is with respect to ending with ab that also you can modify accordingly so you have a flexibility flexibility of uh, solving it but on the other end this itself is the problem this itself is the problem so what do we say writing nfa is easy but it is not efficient. So normally what do we do? We try to write, uh, we say NFA is flexible, but not efficient. So we try to write NFA because it's very easy, but we try to convert it into DFA, which is more efficient. So I, I specify one more thing, check now. So as I said, uh, it is flexible but not efficient. Let's take another simple example to say uh, NFA to 
accept strings of A, S, and B, ending with A, B. See the diagram now. You can just observe in the state Q naught, you have uh, two transitions from the input symbol A. That's agreed. That's agreed. Still agreed. And you can see there are no transitions for A and B. Still agreed. Still it is NFA. So what is the conclusion? You have a flexibility to draw NFA however you want. However you want, I underline it saying how many ever transitions you want. So, and there is no flexibility, there is no such uh, restrictions on number of states also. Check my uh, previous videos. While drawing DFAs, I would have told you should have minimum number of states. You cannot exceed the states, but that may not be possible with respect to, it is not the constraint with respect to if you can have as many. Everything is accepted there. Now, since I say this is not efficient and but flexible, we try to convert NFA to DFA. Observe one more thing in this. Uh, in the state Q0, with the input symbol A, you have two transitions. Fine. But if it was DFA, you will be having only one transition. So I write one more definition. Every DFA is an NFA, but vice versa is not true. Hope this is clear. Understand properly. Every DFA is an NFA. Why? Because there exists only one transition for every input symbol. So obviously it comes under NFA also because NFA says we can have zero, one or more transitions. So for that purpose, we say every DFA is an NFA. Agreed, not, 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 not at all an issue. But vice versa is not true. You cannot say NFA is DFA because the uh, definitions won't match. Clear. Moving on, we have to convert conversion from NFA to DFA. There are two methods. One is lazy evaluation method. Other is subset construction method. So these are the two methods to specify or to convert the given NF or NFA to DFA. So why do I talk about this um, conversion in any grammar? If, if any company is using any, any specific grammar, if you want to write uh, FA for that, it's pretty easy to write NFA first. So we write NFA, then we convert it into DFA because DFA is efficient. NFA we write because of flexibility. We convert it into DFA because of efficiency. And main thing, there is no confusion. Please do observe again. If in a state Q0, there may be there are two transitions with the input symbol A. Now we'll have a confusion whether to reach Q0 and or reach Q1. So in order to avoid those confusions, we usually write NFA, then we convert it into DFA by using any of these two methods. Anyhow, we will discuss or my next videos will be on these two methods. Keep watching till then. Thank you. Please do subscribe to the channel, click on the bell icon. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you.